Hey YouTube, Hickory Stick back again. So, you want to start reloading. Well, what I want to do is I want to make a couple videos for you just to kind of give you some basic information and share a little insight from things that I've learned along the way when I started putting together my reloading stuff. Now, if you want a real, in, a real deep in-depth look Go over to Johnny's Reload Bench. He made a whole series of videos where he went in great depth about it. So I'm not going to rehash what's already been done and been done very well. So I'm going to kind of give you the crib notes version of the whole deal. So the place you need to start with when you want to look into reloading is you got to get an idea about your bench. Now, me personally, I wanted something that was going to be more permanent and something that was going to be a nice piece of um, kind of rustic looking furniture that I could have and I could use for a reloading bench. So I built my own. And I like how it turned out. I built it to fit the area in which I was going to have. I got online. I found some plans for a base. Um, I found the plans for the backboard and everything, and not really the plans, but I found, found some pictures of it, and I just kind of figured everything out, and my friend built the tabletop for me. So, but you don't have to do that. You can be, you can repurpose an old table, maybe an old kitchen table. You can repurpose a bench or whatever. I've, I've seen guys on Facebook reloading groups, one guy loading in a camper, on a camper table. So, you can do it, but the, the key to having some really successful reload, reloading, in my mind, is to have a good, sturdy bench. The reason being is when you start sizing brass, especially large caliber rifle brass, uh, bottleneck brass, it's going to take a lot of force to size that brass. And you want your bench to be, number one, sturdy enough to hold up to the pressure, but also either heavy enough so that it does not rock on you or secure to the floor. Now, my bench is heavy enough. It's heavy, it doesn't rock, it stays where I want it. I don't have to secure it, it hold, it stays. And it works well for me. This may not work well for you. You may not have the space for something like this, but the key is get something that's going to be sturdy enough for you. Now, another thing to think about with your bench is your height. Because when I built this one, I measured myself and I measured my working height so that I could, A, stand up and work and not have to stoop over. And also that when I was you running my press, when, I, when my press was at full bottom like this, I don't have to stoop over. So it's not straining my back any. I can also take one of the kitchen uh, chairs from our bar, our snack bar in our kitchen, and it just happens to be the right height, so I can sit down and load. So you want to measure your height, and you want to set your bench height to yourself, so that you aren't straining yourself. Another thing that you need to be conscious of is your press itself, where you're going to mount it. If you're right-handed. My suggestion to you is mount the press on your strong side, being your right side. If you're left-handed, mount it over here on your left side. Also, another thing to remember is this press is going to put a lot of leverage on the edge of your bench. When my friend built this bench top for me, it's made out of pine. I didn't have the money to do maple, which was what I originally wanted, but so he made it out of pine for me. And he glued one and a half inch strips together. And since pine has a weak grain, he took a piece of all thread about a foot in on each end and ran it through, tightened it, pulled it tight, and then he glued an end cap on. Well, me and him, neither one realized, but when I went to mount my press, the holes for the press lined up right in the seam of the very outside board. So, that's why I had to do what you see here. I had to take this piece of 2x6, come further back, put my bolts in here, and bolt the press to the 2x6 so that it wasn't on this outside board. All my securing point was back in 
the strong section of the bench. So once you get your bench figured out, then you can move on to your equipment. Now, once you got your bench situation figured out, the next thing you want to think about is your equipment. Now, there's a plethora of reloading equipment that you can get. There's umpteen presses, powder dispensers, case trimmers, whatever. There's all kinds of them that you can buy. And when it comes to single stage presses, some are better than others, from what my research has discovered. But all of them will do the job. Now, personally, after doing all my research, I decided to go with the RCBS Rock Chucker. And the reason being is I wanted a very strong press that I knew was not going to give because I knew I was going to be loading a lot of rifle ammo. So, went with the RCBS Rock Chucker. My wife actually bought me the Rock Chucker Supreme Master Kit, which came with the press. It came with one of their Uniflow powder measures. It came with one of their scales. It came with a hand primer and uh, several other hand tools of, that we, you needed, funnel. And so it was a really good press. I think she got it on sale for like 170 bucks, which was really cheap at the time. And it is very nice. I have loved it. It works very well. It's very strong. And it does not take much effort at all to even to prime even large cases with. So that's what I went with. I like it. Um, to a little word about the Uniflow powder measures, though. These powder measures, I have I have both of them. They make a large and a small. And I have both. And the reason why I have both is you can take these apart and you can take the drum apart and swap out between the large and the small cylinder. But that entails taking the whole thing apart. So what I did was I got a gift certificate for my local sporting goods store and I, for my birthday. And I went down and I bought me a second one. I bought me a small. The kit comes with a large. But I bought the small for loading pistol. The large, the large will meter 10 to, I think, 100 grains easily, very nicely. But it doesn't measure under 10 grains very well. So you need the small if you're going to load pistol and load under 10 grains. Now, what I have to say about these is when you get them, they do not have this baffle in them. The one that comes with kit does not have the baffle. I went to the baffle. The baffle works really nicely. What the baffle does is it keeps an even pressure on the drum of powder no matter how much powder you've got in it so you get a nice even flow of powder regardless of how much is in the hopper one thing about these though these uniflow powder measures meter ball and flake powder very well i mean dead on the money but they don't measure stick powder as well which as I understand, is a common thread when it comes to these type of powder measures. So if you're wanting to throw some really exact charges of stick powder, you're going to get it close with these a little bit under, and you're going to use yourself a powder trickler to finish out your charges. But other than that, this measure meters very well. I did buy it off the RCBS stand. I mounted it here because it was a convenient place for me to mount it. You can mount it anywhere you want. Besides that, extra, I got the RCBS Universal Case Trimmer. Comes with all the inserts from all the way down from, I think it says 22 all the way up to 50, uh, 45, I'm sorry, all the way up to 45. This is a very nice case. It's a hand trimmer, but it's very nice. It does very well. It's very accurate. It's got a little bit of a micrometer adjustment on it. Works very well. I really like it. I just mounted it to a board to have a bigger base for it. Now, some presses come with a 
priming tool on the press so that when you deprime, you can flip your priming tool up and reprime as you come down. Well, I have found that I like to use the prime, the hand primer. I, I enjoy hand priming. It gives you a better feel. You can feel the primer slip into the primer pocket better with the hand primer. And it just overall is a better priming experience to me. So that's what I use. I like the hand primer. This is the one that came with the kit, the RCBS. It uses shell holders. RCBS actually makes one that is universal and does not use shell holders. But this kit came with one of the shell holders and it's pretty simple. I buy extra shell holders. That way I've got one that I can just leave in there at all times for whatever I'm doing. So, list of equipment. I know I've scattered over some of my equipment and went rather fast. A list of equipment that I think at minimum you will need for reloading. So, of course, a press. One good powder measure of some sort. You will need a case trimmer. You will need a scale. Now, you also... Beside a balance scale, balance scales are very good. You also want to get a digital scale. You want to have more than one scale because you want to be able to check the scales against each other to make sure you're throwing the right weight powder. So, two scales, a priming tool if you're not going to prime on your press. You need a micrometer to measure case length. Measure case length, measure overall bullet cartridge length. So you need your micrometer. You're also going to need a good end prep tool for your cases. So when you chuck up your case into your case trimmer, when you're done trimming your case, there's going to be a bur some possibly burred edges, possibly sharp edges. You need a good case trimming tool that will go in there, clean the inside, clean the outside to make a nice reamed case. The RCBS Rock Chucker Kit comes with this thing. This thing's garbage. Waste of time. It's, I mean, it works. It works, but it's, it's a pain in the butt. It's small. You can't hardly hold on to it. This is the Lyman uh, case reaming tool. Comes with also besides the case reaming tool, it comes with all your adapters to clean primer pockets and uniform primer pockets. So, for it's 24 bucks For $24, invest you some money in that. You won't be dissatisfied with it. Okay, so, besides all of that equipment, you're going to need a powder trickler. Always going to need a powder trickler. And I recommend also a set of check weights. These are calibrated weights of various sizes that you can use to check whether or not your scale is actually reading what it says it's reading. These are kind of expensive. This is an RCBS kit. I think this kit was $45. This is the master kit. But it's worthwhile, especially if you're shooting something like a pistol or a high-powered rifle where you're going to blow yourself up if you put too much powder. So definitely a set of check weights. Besides that, the last thing that you're really going to need is a case cleaner. Now, just like with presses, there's a bunch of different case cleaners out there. You've got dry tumblers, wet tumblers, and then you've got ultrasonics. I went with the ultrasonic because of a couple reasons. Number one, it's compact. And it won't hold a whole lot. About 75 cases, probably a pistol, probably 50 cases of rifle. So it's not going to hold a whole lot at once, but I don't do a whole lot of volume. So I don't need a big case cleaner. The other reason that I went with it is its ease of use. Dry tumblers, a lot of people like dry tumblers. 
my friend has a dry tumbler, and I personally just don't think it gets the cases clean enough. The best way, the, if you want bright, shiny, new-looking brass cases, you're going to have to do a wet tumbler with some stainless steel media in it. The problem with a wet tumbler with stainless steel media in it is it's a good bit of work because you've got to mix up your fluids, you've got to mix up your solution, get all your cases in there. Then you got to tumble them. Then you've got to clean all your solution off of them. Then you got to pull them out. You got to let them dry. So it's a it's a good bit of extra work. Now, if you're doing a large volume, that's fine. It'll work great for you. Big case tumblers, man. You can put three, four hundred rounds in some of them. I do a small volume. This is simple. This is easy for me. It gets my clay cases good and clean. Now, it's not going to get them shiny new. This is a case that I just recently cleaned. I don't know if you can see it real well. That's about as clean as it's going to get it. And that's cleaning it. This thing has a heat setting. That was cleaning it with heat. But that's good enough for me. I don't need bright, shiny, new looking cases. I'm perfectly happy with that right there. It does good for me. So I went with this. About a hundred bucks. And I like it. So... Once you've got all that equipment, then you can start looking at dyes. Now, your dyes, what kind of dyes you get, are of course, like everything else, is going to be dependent upon what type of ammunition you want to load. What caliber do you want to load, I guess I should say. There are about as many dye brands out there as there are presses. Personally, I have not bought anything other than Lee dyes. A lot of research went into dyes. Lee dyes, they're cheap. They're probably the cheapest on the market. They appear to be really good dyes. I like them. They have done really well for me and then in the short time that I've had them. But there's all different kinds of dyes. For example, this is these are my dyes for 38 Super. These are 45 government, 4570 government rifle dyes. So there's a lot of confusion I know on dyes because there's, like I said, a bunch of different kinds of dyes. Well, what type of dye you use is going to be dependent upon how you want to load. So, I guess we'll, we'll start off with your initial prep. When you first fire a round, you've got your spent casing. That's all you've got. You've got a spent primer in it. So, if you look in your case of dies, pretty much every die has a depriming and sizing die in it. Now, what that die does is you run your case up inside of it, and there's a little pin inside of it. As your case goes in, it sizes that case back to the size, the proper size for that cartridge. And it also, the little pin, pushes the spent primer out. There's one problem with that. These dies, they'll get dirty. And if you're running fired cases through your sizing die without cleaning them, you're getting your die dirty. Well, you also, you don't want to clean, although some people do, but I don't want to clean my brass with the primer still in them because it's not going to clean the primer prop pocket. It's not going to get cleaned out. So the answer is something that I recommend and that is a universal decap and die. Several companies make these. This just happens to be a Lee. And it is what its name implies. It simply decaps your brass. You chuck it up in your press. You set it per the instructions. And you can run your brass up in it. You run your brass up in it. Tink decaps it, does not size the brass, and it is universal, this die that I've got, it'll decap these 4570s, 
It'll decap these 38 Supers. It'll decap 223. It'll decap just about anything. This die, I think, was 16 bucks. This is, in my opinion, a must-have. Universal decap and die. Get you one of those. Next thing, putting it in backwards. You need to look at is your sizing die. What type of sizing die do you want? Well, there are two different kinds of sizing dies. You've got a full length sizing die and you have a neck sizing die. For a pistol, especially a semi-auto, you're going to use a full length. For a rifle, such as a bolt action or a single shot, you may want to use a neck sizing die. Now, what's the difference, you might ask? Well, the difference is just what the name implies. A full length sizing die will size the entire piece of brass from the tip all the way down to the base. Whereas a neck sizing die only resizes the section of the brass that is considered the neck or the section of the brass where the bullet slides into. Now, there are advantages and disadvantages to each kind. Of course, your full length sizing die, the advantage to that is when you size it, the brass will go into any gun. You can rechamber it in what in any other gun that's made for that chamber. The disadvantage is that brass is not fire formed to the chamber of that gun. So you don't get a perfect gas seal. On a neck sized brass, which is what these are, these are 4570 cases, and I've neck sized them. On a neck sized brass, if you have fired this brass in your rifle once already, that brass is fire formed to the chamber of your gun. If you just size the neck, you just resize the section the bullet goes into. You can chuck a new bullet in there, load it back into your gun, and this brass is perfectly fit to the chamber of that gun. Therefore, you get a better gas seal. The disadvantage to that is, is that bullet's only going to work in that gun, or a gun that has an identical chamber, which is not likely. So there's advantages and the disadvantages to each kind. But really, if you're using a bolt-action weapon, then... You probably want a neck size. If you have more than one gun of the same caliber, you're going to want a full length size. If you're shooting a semi-auto, you're going to want a full length size that because a neck size round will not chamber well, or if at all, in a semi-auto. The next thing is carbide or tool steel dies. Well, that answer is pretty simple. If you're shooting a pistol, it will behoove you to get carbide sizing dice. They're available for pretty much any pistol round. And the what it means by a carbide sizing die is the fact that inside the sizing die, there is a ring, an insert of carbide in there. Now what the carbide does for you is that it allows you to size your brass without lubricant. This is a steel sizing die from this 4570. You're not going to find very many rifle sizing dies that are carbide because of the nature of a rifle bullet. The bullet is long, you've got a lot of brass. So even though you use a carbide sizing die, it's, you still need some lubricant because of the amount of brass. On a steel size and die, you've got to lube your cases down. Just a light lube. So that when you size your cases with your die, your case will slide in and out of that die freely. If you don't put if you forget to put lube on your case, you'll know it real fast because that case will get stuck up in that die. Now with a carbide size and die for a pistol, you don't have to worry about lube. That carbide is so slick that it doesn't need lube, so it slides right on in, right on out. Sometimes you will get one that will get stuck, but it's kind of rare. So, 
that's your low down on dies. Quick low down on. Oh, I take that back. There's one other thing. Crap die. Now, let's just get these back out. This kit, this is your this is your lead kit. Um your lead uh what do they call this? Just a standard lead reloading kit. Carbide die set. Alright, so this set has three dies in it. Pretty much all Lee sets have three dies. Some of their rifles and some of their pistol sets come with a four die in a four die set, and I'll explain that in a minute. But this die, this kit has three dies in it. Number one, it has a carbide sizing die and decapper. Number two, you have what is called a powder through expanding die. Now what this die does is once you have your brass all cleaned, decapped, and reprimed and sized, sized and reprimed, then what you'll want to do is you will want to run it into this um, expanding die. What the expanding die does is when the cap or the brass goes up in the die, there is a little floating um, divot in there. Let's see if I can get it out. Oh, it doesn't come out. So there's a little floating divot in there that it will slightly expand the case mouth for you. And what happens when it does that is that expansion of that case mouth, because the case has been sized so it's shrunk down to its minimum size. If you stick the, the expander die in there, it will size the case mouth out just a little so that it makes it easier for you to take one of your bullets and set your bullet down in there. They've already opened this one up some. Set your bullet in and get your bullet started. So it's called a powder. Lee calls there's a powder through expanding die because there's got it's got a hole all the way through it that you could drop your powder through and charge cases with it. I don't personally do that. The next thing you've got, your third die in your set, is your bullet seating die. Now, this die performs two functions, actually. Number one, it will seat your bullet, and number two, it will taper crimp your brass. And you adjust its crimp by turning this. Now, me, I keep it set all the way in because I don't use this die to crimp my brass. I just simply use this die to seat my bullet to the proper depth. The reason I don't use this die to seat my brass is because I use one of these. Lee makes one of these for pretty much every caliber. This is a factory crimp die. And this die does just as its name implies. It places the same type of crimp on your brass that would be done at the factory. They're a little different for every one. I have one for my 4570 and I have one for my 38 Super. When I go to the next ammo, I will get one for that also. So I don't use the bullet seating die to crimp. I just merely seat the bullet to the right depth with it and then I put in my factory crimp die and crimp it. I really like this. Not an expensive die. That's like I said, that's why I like these Lee dies. They're not expensive. I think this this set was like thirty-two dollars. This set of three. I've got the same three dies in the forty-five seventy government. Same exact three dies: a sizing die, expander die, and a bullet seating and taper crimp die. Now Lee also offers in some pistol calibers and some rifle calibers the more more common ones and the more popular ones. They offer a four die set which has these three dies and also a factory crimp die included for a little bit cheaper price. Now, this this is a Lyman die. It is a 45 caliber short. And this appears to be a good die. Uh, this is the only Lyman die I have, but it appears to be a good die. This is a neck sizing die for my 4570. And this is what I use to size my cases with on that 4570 because 
of the fact that I shoot it. I shoot single shot 4570s. So therefore I like my cases neck sized. Okay, so that's quick lowdown on equipment. So just to recap, you need your good press. I like the Rock Chucker. They, I know Lee makes a very good one. Uh, Johnny's Reloading Mitch, I think, on his series on equipment, he goes through and he actually bought a Lee set. I think it was a Lee, or it might have been a, anyway, I think it was a, yeah, it was the Lee set. And a breech lock set. And he actually tested it and tested all this stuff that it came with and went through the whole deal about uh, setting up and everything like that. This is just a quick recap. So you need a press, you need you a powder dispenser, you're going to need a case trimmer, you're going to need some sort of priming tool, be it a hand primer or a, case, or a uh, press primer. You'll need two scales, preferably, I prefer one digital, one balance beam, a set of check weights, a funnel, funnel's handy, not necessary, but handy. You'll need a powder trickler. You'll need your dies. You'll need a case reamer tool. And you will need a micrometer for checking your case length and your bullet overall length. It's also one, uh, one last thing. This came in my kit, and I really like it. I think it's something that would be handy for you to have. Is This is just a case lube pad. It's all it is. This is a uh, good old Hornady case lube. I mean, not our Hornady, RCBS case lube. You just put a little bit on the pad and roll, roll the cases around on it. Done. Now, I know that this stuff, I don't know how popular this is, but I know that the seems to be the most popular is the Redding Imperial Sizing Wax. Uh, I'm going to try some of that when I run out of this, but for now, this has been working good for me. So, that's your quick rundown on your equipment. And the next time I think we're going to do a video, I think we're going to load up a few rounds of 38 Super. I'll give you a quick rundown on basics of reloading and basics of case prep in the next video. So, until then... Y'all have a good one.